Please be seated. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. That is what these two disciples on the way to Emmaus are saying, said to Jesus. We had hoped that he, had, he was the one to redeem Israel. They're leaving Jerusalem afraid, brokenhearted, worried, anxious about what was to come. And so one of the things that they say to Jesus when they have not recognized him is how they had placed this hope on this man. And now this man was dead, but maybe not. Because they're hearing rumors that maybe, maybe he has not died after all. And so Jesus reveals himself to them, confirming, confirming that he is the Redeemer. He is the salvation. He is the one that is to come. He is the one that they've been waiting for to put all things right. And that revelation to them, that engagement between them and Jesus, is what gives them the courage to turn around and go back to Jerusalem. Dangerous territory going back in the dark into dangerous city because Jerusalem, there's a lot of upheaval right now with all that's going on, but they go back because they want to share the good news. We have seen the risen Christ. We have seen Jesus again. He is the one. He is the one that we had hoped for, and he has come back to tell us that all will be well. And they go back to tell us. So what does the resurrected Jesus offer us today? What does that offer us? Knowing that Jesus was resurrected, knowing that we celebrate the resurrection every Sunday, not just on Easter Day, not just for 50 days, but every Sunday we remember and we recall that resurrection. What does it offer? And so here I would say, that it's an antidote to our anxieties and our concerns, our loneliness, our depressions. And I want to be very clear, those of you who are listening to me today and those of you who may be listening to me in a couple of weeks or whenever you listen to this, I am not saying anxiety is not a medical condition. I am not saying don't take medication. I'm not saying any of that. I am a strong believer in mental health care. I believe in therapists and psychologists and psychologists, and they are important for our community, and there are people who need this medical health, and many who don't have it who should have it. So I'm not saying that. But I am saying that for most of us, when we feel anxious, though not when we have a condition, but when we feel anxious or we're afraid or we feel lonely, that knowing about this resurrected Jesus could offer us hope, could offer us the understanding that we are not alone. That is what I think is a beautiful antidote for the majority of us because we constantly are bombarded by so many things that are going wrong, so many things that are not right. And so believing, being believers, and seeing the world through the lens of a believer, of a resurrected Jesus, can offer us some real solve for our anxiety. Because we, we know, we trust, that Jesus has forgiven us our sin, the sin, the big one, the one that separates us from God, the one that keeps us from being in relationship to God. He has come to put that hole. And so trusting in that, if we believe that sin is a separation from God, and what better separation than violence, injustice, racism, poverty, environmental degradation, all those things that can separate us from God, we know, we know that through Jesus it would be made whole. And we have come to trust in this God that has 
always kept his promises, but we are reassured because this God has raised Jesus from the dead and has given him up to glory. And it is our faith and our hope that we put in God. So when we put that hope and trust in God, then all these other things that are swirling around, distracting us, making us anxious and worried and afraid, we can say, wait, wait. Who is really in charge here? Who is really heading up the ship? Who is really, who is this, who is going to be okay? And what we know, what Peter reminds us, is that we, this promise has been made by Christ to all of us. He says the promise is for everyone, for us, for our children, those that are far away, everyone whom the Lord calls to him. And so here's the thing. Peter doesn't say only those inside, only those close in, only those who call on the Lord. Peter says those that the Lord calls to him. Brothers and sisters, that's us. <laughs> that's every single one of us. God calls us. The Lord calls us in. The Lord says, you are mine. The Lord says, I came here and I have come to show you that God was, has kept, will keep, and continue to keep the promises that he has made to make you whole. So you are not alone. You are not in this world by yourself. And so all the issues of the world that we deal with, that I often say, let's work together, let's come together, work. You know, I don't think I sometimes forget to be clear. And what I mean by that is we are the body, the hands and feet, right, to work towards something. We are called to do our part. But who's the head? Jesus. Oh, I like these Bible study students. Man, they're always on target. That's right. Jesus is the head. Jesus is the one leading us. Jesus is the one guiding us. Jesus is the one that's going to help us through this. So when I talk about Jesus, I'm talking about this resurrected Jesus, the one we have seen, the one that the disciples have seen, and the ones we have seen. We are not alone in this not you individually, not we as a collective, because we have our head, we have our Lord, we have our Messiah that has given us the Holy Spirit to guide us and to be with us and to lead us. And so we as committed disciples, as committed part, part of the body of Christ, we do our part, but only our part, only our part. We don't have to shoulder it all. We don't have to worry of how are things going to end because we trust in this God that will bring about and make all things whole. And so when we do this, when we think about our part in working together with God's help, with God and with Jesus leading us, then we will be able to end violence and injustice and racism and poverty and environmental degradation. That will come. And some of us, let's be honest, may not see that in our lifetime. But we trust that it will be done. And so that is the long view. That is the understanding that we are part of this journey but at the end of the day, Jesus is our Redeemer. And when we have this understanding, then we can talk about this trust and then this faith that we have in Jesus and that we can then tell others this hope that we have can be the antidote to this anxiety, to this worry, to this concern, and this feeling anxious all the time. 
it can be the antidote to that because we come at it from a different lens and we talk to others about this resurrected Jesus. Brene Brown talks about how anxiety is so contagious. A, a group of people but having a grand old time and doing just fine. And in walks somebody and goes, can you believe it? And then just everybody just starts shaking. I mean, it is like, like if you're, for those of you who are musicians and know instruments, right, you, like you hit a note and it reverberates, right, like a string when you pluck a string on a violin or on a guitar and it reverberates, that's anxiety. It just spreads. But hope can also do the opposite. You walk into a room, everybody's bent out of shape, everybody's all clucky, 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 and can you believe, can you believe? And you walk in, you're like, oh, interesting. Is that really all the story? Is that really everything that's happening? Maybe we need to take a breath together. Let's think about this before we get all bent out of shape. Calm things down. I've noticed that I'm going to bed with a list in my head. And I wake up with a list in my head. Maybe it's only me. But I need Jesus. <laughs> And I need to trust that I can go to bed and whatever was done or left undone will be okay. And when I wake up in the morning, I gotta say thank you. Thank you for another day. Thank you for the breath. Thank you for what I have. Thank you for what I don't have. And then go about my day. We need Jesus. That resurrected Jesus that we have seen, the one that we have encountered when a meal gets brought over to our house when we're not well, when we get that ride to the doctor, when we get that phone call, how are you? How's it going? I haven't seen you in a while. Everything okay? that resurrected Jesus that we see when we work together and we pass legislation to make sure there's rental assistance for our neighbors, increase health care or funding for education. That resurrected Jesus we have seen when our church has changed and opened up so that women can be ordained, so that our brothers and sisters, part of the LBGTQ community, are now also being ordained and being able to live fully into their ministry. There are many examples in our lives where we can point to where we have seen the redeeming Lord, how that redeeming Lord was part and is part of our lives and will be part of our lives. Weren't our hearts burning when we encountered that resurrected Jesus? So let's go out and not only work for a better world, doing so, but do, no, doing, knowing that we are not doing this alone. And just as importantly, let us go out and share the good news. Share the hope that you have that you have encountered that resurrected Jesus and share that in person and online. Be the one that brings that calm through hope into every space you encounter. Amen.